Hi, three, two, and three, four. Welcome back. We've got another video, which means another costume. What do you think? Do you like me with green hair? Oh my gosh, I know, right? Look at my makeup too. So, three, two, and three, four. We're gonna be reading the story today called I Wanna Iguana. So Mrs. Moser tried her best because they don't sell iguana costumes, so she made it work the best she could. So let's take a look at that objective or our project topic for today. All right, Mr. Moser, you ready to zoom in? Okay, our project topic for today is how do writers use details and evidence to persuade someone to do something? <gasps> OMG, today is all about persuading. You are going to try to persuade somebody in your family to do something, and so is Mrs. Moser, okay? So before Mrs. Moser gets moving on to the vocabulary words for our story, I wanna to talk to you about what ways that um, authors have. It's called author's pie. You can persuade, inform, or entertain, and I've got a little song for you to help you remember it. So here we go. Authors write for several reasons. To inform you about animals or seasons. To inform means to teach you something like why it rains or why the bees sting. To entertain is to make people laugh like tripping over a large giraffe. To persuade is to convince or to make us believe like stopping air pollution because it makes it hard to breathe. Authors have many reasons to write. Just remember author's pie and you'll be all right. So we're focusing on the persuade today. Persuade is to convince or to make us believe. So that's what it's all about today in our story. Are you ready to go over our vocabulary words? I like myself with bangs, guys. All right, here we go. All right, Mr. Mosey, you ready? All right, let's take a look at our first word that's in our story today. Go ahead and try to sound it out, please. If you said the word was uglier, you are absolutely correct. Let's do those syllables. Ugly er three. Let's go ahead and raise it. Ugly er cross it. Ugly er tap it. Ugly er. <gasps> you should see something at the end of the word. I C E R, and that should tell you something. First of all, it means more unpleasant, ugly, uglier, ugliest. So. EST means the most, ER means more, okay? So I want you to think about that. If I can, if that is a noun, a verb, or an adjective, a noun, person, place, or thing, something you can touch, a verb, an action, something you can do, or an adjective, a descriptive word, using all of your senses. Hmm, if I can use that word to describe the uglier dog, the uglier cat, what do you think? It's a noun, a verb, or an adjective? Talk about it. If you think it's a noun, verb, or adjective, chat, chat, chat. If you said it's an adjective, you are absolutely correct. And it's not just an adjective, three, two, one, three, four, because it is a comparative adjective because we're comparing, we can compare things. So our motion, whenever you hear the word uglier, Ugly, ugly, uglier, more ugly. Let's try that one more time. Ugly, uglier, more ugly. Or I should say, ugly, uglier, more unpleasant. I like that word better. Unpleasant, okay? Let's take a look at our next word, Mr. Moser. If you could zoomy, zoom, zoom. Go ahead and try to sound that out. If you said the word was mature, you are absolutely correct. Let's do those syllables. Mature. Two. Let's go ahead and hold it. Mature. Let's go ahead and crisscross it. Mature. And let's go ahead and dab it. Mature. Ooh, so let's take a look at what mature means. Up here it says grown up. So when someone acts mature, they act grown up. Like they be adults. So I want you to think about if this word is a noun, a verb, or an adjective. So I, might, I can use this to describe the mature student, the mature teacher. So if I can use this to describe, what do you think? Chat it up, chat it up. 
if you said it was an adjective, you are absolutely correct because we can use that word to describe. So grown up, and then when we, in the story, get to the word mature, I would like you to do this. So, grown up. Can you do that for Mrs. Moser? So, grown up. Excellent job. You ready for the next word, Mr. Moser? Let's go ahead and zoom. I want you to try to sound it out. If you said the word was trial, you are absolutely correct. Let's do those syllables. Trial. One. Let's go ahead, Mr. Moser Dabbit. Trial. Let's go ahead and hashtag it. Trial. And let's go ahead and robot it. Trial. Excellent. Hmm. Let's take a look at what this word means. Give something a try. Hmm. I know this word is also a homonym. Said the same, spelled the same, different meanings. So it's a mm -mm good word. It's a multiple meaning word. So the trial I'm thinking of besides the one is here is that you can go to trial, like you can go to a court, but that's not what this, it means in this story. Somebody's going to be doing a trial of something. So it's something they can do. So do you think that's a noun? Do you think that's a verb? Or do you think that's an adjective? Chalk it up. Talk, talk, talk. If you said it was a verb, you are absolutely correct. In this case and how it's used in our story, it is a verb. So whenever Mrs. Moser reads the word trial, we're going to do this. Give it a go. Give it a go. Okay, let's try that one more time. Give it a go. Nice work. We have one more word. Let's check it out. Check it out. This is a big one. It's a big one. Go ahead and take a little bit of time. Chunk it if you need to, break it apart, sound it out. If you said the word was compassionate, you are absolutely correct. Let's do those syllables, compassionate. Four syllables, whoa baby, that's a lot of syllables. Let's go ahead and, mm, let's go ahead and selfie it. Compassionate. Let's go ahead and ant clap it. Compassionate. And let's go ahead and swim it. Compassionate. Excellent job. Let's take a look at what it means. Show concern for others. Oh, so you might care about them and what they do. So do you think that word, if we can show someone we care, we can describe them as compassionate. Do you think that's a noun, a verb, or an adjective? the compassionate teacher, the compassionate Mr. Moser, the compassionate parent. If you said it was an adjective, you are absolutely correct. Good job. For our hand motion, whenever we get to the word compassionate, we're gonna do this. Show love. Let's do that one more time. Show love. Nice work. All right. Go ahead and get yourself some snacky snacks, some drinky drinks, and take a stretch break, and we'll be back in a few. Okay. Bye. I hope you got a great stretch and got some snacks. Okay. So I'm so excited for this story, three, two, and three, four. It's called I Wanna Iguana. And the author is Karen Kaufman Orloff, and the illustrator is David Catrone. And the publisher of this story is J.P. Putnam's Sons. So in this story, there is a little boy, a character we're going to learn about soon, and he writes letters back and forth between him and his mom. And remember objective, we're trying, they're trying to persuade. So something that he really, really wants or really, really needs. Okay, so let's see if he gets what he wants in the end. But before we go ahead and read our story, let's go ahead and review our vocab. We have uglier, ugly, uglier, the most unpleasant. We have compassionate, showing love. We also have trial, give it a go. And then our last word, Mr. Moser, is, and our last word is mature. So, grown up. Excellent job. 
Okay. So this story is all about someone that wants something. They're trying to persuade, okay? To persuade is to convince or to make us believe. But since this story is a lot about an iguana, and you can see Mrs. Moser's trying her best to dress up like one, I want to talk to you about iguanas and where we can find them. So here's another map of the United States. You know, Mrs. Moser loves to show her maps. So I wanted to show you where iguanas live in the world. And if you look on the map and if you look in the areas where there's red, you can see where they live. They like living where it's warmer. And you'll notice that behind me, I'm in a little bit of what kind of like a rainforest or where it's tropical. Okay. All right, so we ready to find out what happens in our story since this is all about letters being written back and forth. I even brought out the bitmojis, guys. Dear mom, I know you don't think I should have Mikey Gulligan's baby iguana when he moves, but here's why I should. If I don't take it, he goes to Stinky and Stinky's dog Lurch will eat it. You don't want that to happen, do you? Signed, your sensitive son, Alex. There's the first letter. Let's see what Alex's mom had to say. Dear Alex, I'm glad you're so compassionate, showing love. But I doubt that Stinky's mother would let Lurch into the iguana cage. Nice try though. Love, mom. Boy, doesn't seem that he persuaded his mother yet, does it? Dear mom, did you know iguanas are really quiet and they're cute too? I think they are much cuter than hamsters. Love your adorable son, Alex. Dear Alex, tarantulas are quiet too, but I wouldn't want one as a pet. By the way, that iguana of Mikey's is uglier than Godzilla. That's not it. Maybe gonna go. Ugly, uglier, the most unpleasant. Just thought I'd mention it. Love, Mom. Oh boy. I don't think she's persuaded. Dear Mom, you would never have to see the iguana. I'll keep his cage in my room on the dresser next to my soccer trophies. Plus, he's so small, I bet you'll never even know he's there. Love and a zillion one kisses. Alex. Dear Alex, iguanas can grow to be over six feet long. You won't have enough space in your whole room, much less your dresser, with or without your trophies. Love, Mom. I want you to take a minute to think about how this story is making you feel. What is your mood right now based on the letters and based on what Alex and his mother are writing back and forth? Talk about it, guys. Dear Mom, it takes 15 years for an iguana to get that big. Mikey told me. I'll probably be married by then. And living in my own house. You're smart and mature, kid Alex. So grown up. And I also have my smart emoji. So I gotta bring back some of those. Dear Alex, how are you going to get a girl to marry you when you own a six? foot long reptile your concerned mother dear mom for 
forget the girl. I need a new friend now. This iguana could be the brother I've always wanted. Love, your lonely child, Alex. Dear Alex, you have a brother. Love, Mom. So far, no persuading. See how these letters start going, three, two, and three, four. Dear mom, I know I have a brother, but he's just a baby. How fun is that? If I had an iguana, I could teach it tricks and things. Ethan doesn't do tricks. He just burps and poops. Love, grossed out Alex. Dear Alex, how do I know you're ready for a pet? Remember what happened when you took home the class fish? Dear mom, if I knew the fish was going to jump in the spaghetti sauce, I would have never taken the cover off the jar. Love, your son who has learned his lesson. P.S. Iguanas don't like spaghetti. Dear Alex, let's say I let you have the iguana on a trial basis. Give it a go. What exactly would you do to take care of it? Love, Mom. Check out this picture. <laughs> I want you to think about what would be a good character trait for Alex based on things he says, based on things he does. Action. Starting to see that that persuasion might be going a little bit. Let's see and find out. Dear mom, I would feed him every day. He eats lettuce. And I would make sure he had enough water. And I would clean his cage when it got messy. Love, responsible Alex. P.S. What is a trial basis? Give it a go. Dear Alex, a trial basis, give it a go means dad and I see how well you take care of him for a week or two before we decide if you can have him forever. Remember, stinky and lurcher waiting. Love, mom. P.S. If you clean your cage as well as you clean your room, you're in trouble. Dear mom, I really, really, really try to clean my room I really will, and the iguana's cage. Also, listen to this. I'll pay for the lettuce with my own allowance. I mean, how much can one baby iguana eat? Anyway, love Alex, the financial wizard. Are you sure you want to do this, Alex? Yes, Mom. I want a iguana. Please. Dear Alex, look on your dresser. Love, Mom. Thank you, thank you. It worked, it really worked. He persuaded his mom, three, two, and three, four.
I want you to think about what would be a better title for this story. I want an iguana and talk about that. I also want you to think about what the central message theme is of this story. And you can talk about that with your families. Okay, Mrs. Moser will be right back in a jiffy because I want to show you some of the enrichment activities that you can do this week, okay? I'll be right back. One. Okay, three, two, and three, four. So as part of our objective, it talks about persuading someone to do something. So I want you to think about a pet that you might like really, really want or something that you really, really want. And I want you to try your best to write a letter or type a letter to someone in your family about what it is that you really, really want. So Mrs. Moser is going to show you the letter I wrote to Mr. Moser. All right, Mr. Moser, do you want to zoom, you zoom in on the letter? And I'm going to go ahead and read it. Here we go. Dear Mr. Moser, and you'll notice when I wrote the letter, I decided to type mine and I put the date at the top because whenever we do a letter, we need to have our date. And then I put who my audience was, dear Mr. Moser. And remember, when you're writing somebody a letter or you're trying to persuade them, you really, really, really want to make sure that you give those eyes and you really, really, really make sure that your lip goes out. And whenever you read it, you really want to try your best make it seem that's something you want so hi i hope you are having an amazing day i was wondering if you might consider getting another yorkie our wonderful dogs louie and teddy are nine and ten years old i think a puppy might energize them and keep them active also a puppy would need to go for a lot of walks and get exercise exercise is great for our hearts and bodies we wouldn't have much to buy because teddy and louie could share their toys since we are home the rest of the school year it would give us plenty of time to potty train him or her thank you for taking the time to read my letter i love you very much your best friend mrs moser so as you can see, three, two, and three, four, I have my letter that I wrote to Mr. Moser. But remember, just like Alex did in the book, you need to give reasons why. You can't just say, I want it. I want it right now. Can't be greedy gertie. We have to actually provide reasons why. Okay. And then, of course, Mrs. Moser put in put your cute picture of your cute puppy over here. Look how cute. And of course, it has to be something that you could actually get. You know how much Mrs. Moser loves sea otters. But would it be appropriate to have one as a pet? No way. I mean, I squeal every time I see them. But we can't really have a sea otter as a pet. So there's my letter to Mr. Moser. And three, two, and three, four. I'm going to show you some extended enrichment activities that you can do right now. Okay. So let's take a look up here. So one of the things you can do is write your letter or to someone in your family about something you really, really want. And if it's a pet, it needs to be something you can actually have. But here's some other options for you if you would like. If you could be any animal on earth, what would you be and why? So maybe give me two or three reasons why if you could be an animal, which one you would be and why. I think that would be really awesome and you can get really creative with it. And then the second thing you could do is the extended enrichment is research an animal of your choice. Any animal you want, but maybe look up some things on them. Write down three interesting facts about that animal. Remember, facts are things that are true. My opinion tells what I believe, even though you may disagree. When I state a fact, those words are true. I'll bet I can prove it to you. Fact, there are 50 states. Opinion, the best food ever made or steaks. Facts tell what happened and can be proved. Opinions tell a judgment on my attitude. So those are some other great options for you. I cannot wait to see what you write and what you look up. Remember, there's lots of different ways you can share with me. And also remember, three, two, and three, four, our raffle is this Friday. Three more names. On Friday at three, Mr. Moser will be pulling out three of pieces of paper that I have. I really hope you enjoyed the story, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with for these activities, okay? I love you guys so much and miss you so much, and I look forward to adding more names in here. Okay, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I miss you so much. Bye. Mwah. Love you. Bye.